Missouri in the late 1980s, and I was in charge of him for a day. When he got off the plane in Kansas City, he had demanded that he be presented with what he called a statutory Missouri cured ham. And he was given the ham, he named it Baby, and he carried it around with him all day. He was in his 90s by now, I want you to understand. He was the star at a big a symposium, and I had gotten the deans of the medical school and the journalism school and the College of Arts and Science to ask Virgil Thompson questions. They were on the stage, they would come up, they would ask him a question, and Virgil Thompson, who was very hard of hearing by this time, gave an answer to the wrong question. He had them in one order, and the presenters had them in another order, and I was right there in the middle. It was surrealistic, you know. The Dean of Agriculture got up and asked a question, and he gave an answer that was completely different. We gave a concert for him that night. He went of his music. He went to sleep during every piece. The applause would awaken him. He would stand up and uh, receive the ovation and sit down again. I took him out to dinner at a restaurant that doesn't exist anymore. And he's the only person I've ever been with who ordered the most expensive thing on the menu, which had implications for my checkbook. Uh, but the thing is, I said, tell us about being in Paris with Nadia Boulanger during the 1920s. He didn't want to talk about that. And I said, well, tell us just one thing. And so in a voice like lots of deaf people use that is very, very loud, he turned to me and he said, the only reason we went to Paris was because the cost of living was cheap and the sex was great. And so, of course, for the rest of the evening, everybody listened to every word that came out of his mouth. <laughs> After the concert was over, he turned to me and he said that he'd like a croissant. It's 11 o'clock in Columbia, Missouri, and I think, where in the hell am I going to find a croissant for Virgil Thompson? But there was a grocery store over on that side of town, and so we drove there, and I parked right in front of it, so he wouldn't have to walk very far. But he was like the little old man who walked like this. And I knew that where we were going was going to be about two blocks away. Well, we got there. There were no croissants. He found something else that he wanted to buy. We went, I took him back to his hotel, and he said he'd had a big day, he'd had a drive in the car, he'd had a symposium, he'd had a concert, and now he was going to have whatever it was, and so that was the end of, of him. When he died a few years later, one of my hobbies is visiting and paying tribute at the graves of great composers. If you ever go to Vienna, go to that one place because you hit about 10 of them all in one place. But anyway, so after he was buried in Slater, Missouri, just down the road here, a little piece, um, I tried to think of what could I do to pay tribute to Virgil Thompson. I didn't have any flowers, which is what I normally take when I go to graveyards, but I did have ham. So I took a piece of ham and respectfully laid it on Virgil Thompson. <laughs>